Hi everybody, I'm Kevin Monahan. And I'm Carl Soule. And I'm a longtime Final Cut Pro editor and trainer. And uh, I'm here today with Carl. He's going to show me more cool stuff from a Final <laughs> Cut Pro perspective, you know, sort of. And so today um, we're going to delve into a little bit about audio. Now, I must admit, being a video guy is that I'm not that keen on audio, but I do know that I need to do some basic stuff. Uh, so why don't you show me, like, how do I get started with some clips that are in the timeline? Um, first thing, the tracks look a little different than what I'm used to. So can you show me what's going on here? Well, this particular uh, timeline sequence here, we're actually working with uh, a bunch of tracks that uh, this one track, this thing that's called Audio One here, is actually called a stereo track. Oh, okay. So this actually contains both the left and the right audio. So as I'm manipulating this, uh, for the most part, when I'm doing trims and things, I just have to worry about one track, and okay. I'm moving both left and right channels. Okay, I, I can I can deal with that. That's cool. Um, it is possible. I know that uh, you know sometimes this can kind of throw people, and there is actually a way. Um, from a, a starting point of view, if, if you're more comfortable having individual tracks for left channel and right channel, mm -hmm. there is a preference that you can set inside of Premiere Pro where you can come in and use uh, preferences under audio. Oh. You can actually come in and you can set something called source channel mapping. It's a okay. lovely, lovely name, but basically what that's saying is you know, when you bring in a file, um, how do you want the track set up? Mm -hmm. And so by default, the way Premiere Pro works is there's somewhere inside of Premiere Pro, there's kind of a database and basically says, you know, formats such as DVC Pro HD, typically you're bringing in four mono tracks. Right, right. So when you bring in those clips, you're going to get four mono tracks. Okay. Um, HDV is set up to bring in a stereo pair. Right. And it, that can create some problems for people that maybe they were doing, you know, ambient sound mm. on one track, track and they've got a, you know, mono lav on the other track. Okay. So... Um, you can come in and you can set the source channel mapping instead of looking at the file, just force it to always choose mono. Okay. And that way uh, everything will come in. If it's a stereo pair coming in, it'll actually just make two mono tracks for you. Oh, I see. So that's one way to, of kind of forcing it. Now this is kind of a general thing. Any clips at that point that you bring in are going to, uh, when they're ingested, that's how the audio is going to be handled. Okay, so they're kind of locked into that mode once you've ingested them. Right. Okay. Um, once you put them on the timeline, they're kind of locked in place. In other words, once the clip uh, is on a timeline, you can't make any changes to this. There's no way to unlock, unfortunately, there's no way to unlock, like if you have clips as a stereo pair in here, they, they oh, stay okay. as a stereo, stereo pair if they're in a timeline. I see, I can't change the dual mono if they're in a timeline, in other words. Right, you okay. have to actually go in, and uh, if you do it ahead of time, though, that's kind of the secret within Premiere Pro. Okay. And because of this, because it is something that's kind of confusing, this idea of having you know a stereo track that right. actually has two tracks within right, it, right. Um, I usually recommend to people, if they're getting started, you know, it's, it's not a bad thing to just make sure and you know set this to just say, I'm just going to deal with mono tracks, and okay. then you can pan left and pan right on a mono track, that's right. not a problem. Right, right. Um, but uh, if you do have a clip that is not in the timeline, you want to go in and uh, make a change to that. You can actually right click on it here, go into modify, oh, okay. change the audio channels. You can see right here the panel is oh. grayed out because uh, this is in a track, but this is where I could come in on a clip by clip basis where I could do a multiple selection mm -hmm. and uh, actually change how these, uh, these audio channels are interpreted. So I, I could say two mono. Mono is stereo is another option where it'll take mono tracks and uh, put them in a, uh, give them... A stereo pair. Yeah, you can drop them on a stereo track. Okay, I, I see. So, so the reason that, again, the reason why that was grayed out and I couldn't make changes is because we've already laid it into the timeline. It's already in a timeline, okay. exactly. Um, when you're working with your audio tracks here, you can see like this, it kind of, when, when I create a sequence, and I'll go ahead and go into the uh, new sequence here just to show this off. Um, when you go into a new sequence, you'll see over here, there's a couple of tabs in here for general and one for tracks. And this is where you choose exactly what type of tracks you want to have uh, by default placed in your timeline. Okay. So in here you can see that this is uh, this particular sequence preset that I chose. This is uh, working with a red camera here. Mm -hmm. um, it's bringing in four mono tracks okay. is what's going to be laid into the timeline by default. You can always go in and change that in the timeline here. If you right click, you can choose to add tracks or delete tracks. Um, so if I choose to add some additional tracks, you know, I could choose in this case to say uh, I want to create a mono track okay. and I want to put that uh, to put before it. the first track. Mm -hmm. And when I do that, I now see. I've got, and you can see here's the little icon for a mono track, here's the icon for a stereo track. I see. Now when you right click down there, I saw something very interesting. Could you right click on that track? 
I saw rename. Now, in Final Cut, I'm kind of locked into track names. Like, they have to be A1, A2 in succession, V1, V2. So are you telling me here I could rename this to like, VO or sure you can uh, scratch track or just choose the rename and at this point you know I could change this to uh, you know VO on this track I could have this one renamed to you know Foley wow and so on and so forth so yeah for people who like to keep their audio clips organized you can definitely do that and you can have as many audio tracks as you want and mix uh, you know have stereo tracks and mono tracks together that's very handy um, okay so how do I just uh, do I fade these clips out like with the pen tool like I do in Final Cut or how do I raise and lower the levels? I see a little yellow line there. Yeah, the yellow line is the uh, the overall volume level. Um, there's a couple of different ways working with uh, with the volume in the clips. You can do like things like multiple selection mm -hmm. and there is a right click for something called audio gain. Oh, okay. So you can go in and do like an oh. overall adjustment here and there's also some normalization options that are found in here as oh, well. That's nice, it's all in one panel here. Okay, Carl, so we're down here in the timeline, and can you just show me how to do some basic keyframing? If I'm making keyframes, this actually, for anybody who's done uh, keyframing over in After Effects, it actually works kind of similar okay. in, uh, in Premiere. Um, if I have a clip selected and I have the scrub bar at a position where I want to add a keyframe, right. I can come over here to this little button here. It's a little, little diamond shape, just mm -hmm. like over in uh, After Effects, right. and I can click on it and say add a keyframe. It's going to drop a keyframe in there. Um, if I'm working with, uh, and I'm doing a lot of keyframing, you're probably going to want to drag the size of this track down. So I can just uh, just need to make sure and drag from the uh, the divider between the tracks and okay. drag up and down, and that sets the uh, the size of that track. Just so like see. Final Cut. Um, now, if I'm over here, let's say I want to add some keyframing to this clip, and I don't want to bother moving my uh, my current time mm -hmm. indicator. If you just hold down the Command key in the keyboard. Um, you can go in here and go ahead and just add as many keyframes as you want. So here I'll just add four keyframes, grab these, drop these Some down. Little rubber band in there. And you can see, yeah, we've got uh, rubber band controls. Now it's also possible if you need a little bit more real estate, if you're doing a lot of this, um, there is actually a panel called Effect Controls. Uh -huh. And you can see here is the, uh, the volume controls in here. Um, here are the same keyframes that I just added. I have this clip selected with four keyframes here. So if I kind of expand this out, mm -hmm. um, you'll see that there are my four keyframes. And uh, you can go in here and there's some more advanced controls that you can do as far as setting, you know, is this a linear ramp between keyframes or if you want to go in and start, uh, you know, playing around with, uh, you know, how exactly these are going to move from one keyframe to another. You can actually uh, do some more advanced controls in here. Okay, are there waveforms in this panel at all that I could see the keyframes are related to? Uh, no waveform in the effect control. You can see the waveform down here and okay. you can expand on that. But uh, yeah, what the control that you get in here is more a matter of, you know, playing with like velocity. You can see here that these are uh, kind of a constant, uh, constant speed right now. It just kind of drops in, but you can actually change these to uh, do a more, uh, uh, you know, more easing in and, and playing with the velocity of these different keyframes from this panel here. Okay. In that case, I see there's a, little, a few more options mm -hmm. that you can make. But I do like the uh, the way you keyframe the timeline using the command key. I know that in Final Cut it's very similar. You you have the pointer tool, but in that case you hit the option key. So it's very very similar. And, and up here it looks like you have a little bit more uh, granularity with the audio. Yeah, you can see here I've added kind of an, an ease into this. Right. So now we've got more of a, a a nice ramp to this. And you can see here's the control for that where I can actually just play with this, and you can see how it's uh, affecting the other keyframes. Um, you know, so there's also a little little right-click control here to be aware of. If you click on the diamond in this panel, you can see where I can change this from a linear to a Bezier curve. Oh. And there's even some options to say ease in and ease out. And these are taken just from uh, After Effects. So if you're for the audio, for the audio, amazing. Okay, yeah. so that's pretty cool because in Final Cut we don't have any. As your control at all, so so that's very cool. One of the things, if I'm doing a lot of uh, audio work here, I'm just going to really quickly change my uh, workspace here to an audio workspace. Okay. Um, by doing this, and let me go ahead and just reset this to uh, to its original layout here. Okay. So this kind of brings up the nice audio mixer panel here. I can see that I've got different tracks listed here. Uh -huh. These correspond to the tracks down in uh, in my audio and my timeline. Okay. Um, 
So this is some place where I can actually set a volume level, and there's also controls in here that allow me to do like latch, touch, write type of commands. So I can actually come in and you know, like ride the levels across the track. If oh, I, want I, to. I see, like auto key framing type of thing. Type of thing, exactly. Okay. Um, here's the one thing that's kind of hidden in the mixer that I think is a really powerful function. You uh -huh. see this little triangle here. A lot of people ignore this Barely. triangle. <laughs> um, if you uh, twirl this down, yeah, it opens up this uh, this area here. And the really powerful thing here, um, you can add on a track by track basis. You can add all different types of audio effects, oh. um, and these are standard VST audio effects. Mm -hmm. um, so it does work with VST plugins. So if I come in here and I want to just throw maybe a multiband compressor across mm -hmm. my voiceover track, that makes sense. Um, if you organize your audio track so that you maybe put voiceover on one track, mm -hmm. fully on another track, this gives you a way of just applying an effect across as many clips as you have on that particular track. Oh, that is so handy because um, I know in Final Cut, I don't think there's a way to do that except for maybe if you nest the audio clips and then maybe put... And even so, that's kind of that's kind of wonky, but, but yeah. I like that. That's pretty cool. And you do have the ability in the timeline itself. Um, you know, if I go down and uh, let me go down to my audio tracks here. Mm -hmm. um, there are audio effects. If I bring open the uh, effects panel here, where did the effects panel move to on my? Uh, I'll tell you what. I'm going to go ahead and just open that. It is open somewhere. I just have to find it. It's right in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's my audio effects. Right. Um, if I want to put use these those same uh, the same audio filters on a clip by clip basis, they mm -hmm. are found in this audio effects folder, and I can come in here and look at my stereo effects. And here's the same list of effects. Um, but this is a nice way of doing it on a clip by clip basis. Or this is a clip by clip basis. This is a track by track basis. Mm -hmm. And one really nice thing is uh, you can think of this just like a traditional audio mixer. We've got uh, you know tracks one, two, three, and four here, but we also have this master track control, and I can apply effects on the entire project. So if I get oh. my audio levels set the way I want, I've got my music and my voice mixed the way I want, mm -hmm. but now I want to apply kind of a compressor or something on top of that just to give it a more punchy feel. Sure. Um, I can apply something like a multiband compressor to the master track, hmm. and that's going to affect everything. After it's been mixed down, it's going to apply the effect to the mix down. Yeah, that's um, cool. I know that we don't have that in Final Cut at all. There's no way to add a that I know of, there's no way to add a filter for the master track coming out. That, so that that is pretty cool. Yeah. Now, what's this crazy interface? <laughs> well, I just double clicked. Nutty. Yeah, um, this is a, a VST uh, filter. Um, this is the multiband compressor interface here. Mm -hmm. I just double clicked on the effect. So oh, let me go back and just show you that really quick. Um, so here I've added the multiband compressor to my list of effects right. that I want. I just selected multiband compressor mm -hmm. here. Now to actually play with the compressor, uh, if I double click on that, it opens up in this panel. And since these are standard VST plugins, sometimes they do look a little bit different from what you would expect to see inside right. of Premiere. Um, but believe me, that's just uh, it's it's a standard user interface. And you know, from here you've got all the uh, the controls to you know set the different ranges. Um, so there's a nice little visual control here for doing this mm -hmm. and, and getting this set up the way you want it. Pretty tweaky. Ah, that's crazy. I think I'm going to have to spend some time with that. Um, before I, we wrap out of this particular section. I did notice one thing in the lower left corner it says history. So are you telling me that the undo has a history and I can go back to certain levels of undo? Yeah, the undo function, uh, the history panel uh, works pretty much the same way it does in Photoshop. I can go through and I can mm -hmm. see right now I've got uh, 18 levels of undo. Okay. Um, and, Is there a maximum uh, amount of undos? Or? It depends on how much RAM you have in the system, okay. but it does try and uh, remember as many as it can until it starts dumping the older older ones out of RAM okay. when, uh, when you start running out of memory. But um, yeah, it uh, it's a nice easy way of moving back. It's very similar to the history panel in Photoshop. Now, this does not exist in Final Cut, and I know as a Final Cut user, this is a long-standing feature request. So it's nice to see this in, in Premiere Pro right off the bat. So. Good deal. But anyway, I think that's about all we have time for right now. So thanks, everybody, for watching. And there'll be plenty more of these, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, and before I forget, um, just wanted to give a shout out to uh, Bay Area Video Coalition. They were kind of to uh, provide uh, this edit bay that we're in today. Bayback rocks.